What's going on you guys, Steven here from Airsoft Tech and today I'm bringing you guys a brand new video. This time we are going to be taking a look at this classic army M4 EC2. Now in the title of the video, I probably have something along the lines of like best beginners, you know, airsoft gun or something like that. I don't know, something like that though. Relax. Okay, I don't want to start a huge debate of you guys commenting, this has nothing on this. This gun is way better. This is way more affordable. You get more out of it. This has nothing on, you know, whatever. Relax. I'm not saying this is the best. I'm not saying this is the best beginners airsoft gun. Gun, so chill, relax. What I'm saying is this has the potential. This potentially could be one of the best. I'm not saying this potentially could be the best. It could be one of the best. Anyways though, Classic Army, I just want to give you a huge thanks and I want to give them a shout out because they were the ones that supplied me with this gun along with the VCW. If you guys haven't seen that unboxing video, and that unboxing video is actually doing really well, so thank you guys for that. But yeah, so I still have to do the video on the VCW. If you haven't seen unboxing, I'll link that in the description below. Um, but yeah, so Classic Army, Thank you, I appreciate you. Now if you guys are interested in purchasing this gun after the video, I will leave a link in the description to a whole bunch of websites that sell this thing, both in tan and black because they have them in both you know, colors or whatever. Uh, so I will leave links to a whole bunch of websites and this will run you, if you do wanna buy it, $165. So very, very affordable, not expensive at all. This is meant, Classic Army is targeting you know beginners. This is what they're meant for. This is their skirmish line of M4s. And guys, what you get out of this thing for $165, it's pretty spectacular. However, I have a serious question to ask you guys because I want to do what you guys want so if you don't want to hear what I'm about to say because I, I really need your feedback but if you don't care you don't really want to hear what I have to say or what I want from you guys go ahead click the time right here or fast forward to this time or skip everything I'm about to say and it'll get right into the review anyways though so if you are listening thank you I appreciate you but up till now when it comes to gun reviews and videos just on guns I usually do two separate videos I have a review video and then I have a shooting test video this video as you guys can tell in the title it says review and shooting test so I'm basically putting two videos into one. This probably will be a longer video. I'm gonna try my best not to, but it probably will be. But the thing I need from you guys is what do you guys wanna see? Cause I wanna do what you guys want. Do you guys want me to keep it as I've been doing, which is have a review video, have it be separate, and then upload a shooting test video, have that be separate. So two separate videos, or would you like to see videos like this? Just one longer video. I'll have timestamps of everything in the description so you can get to whatever you wanna see and just basically have one video just going completely over the gun. So yeah, let me know. Two separate videos or one video, that's that's what I want to see in the comments because I'm going to do what you guys want. Anyways, with all that being said, let's go ahead and get into the actual video. All right, so let's go ahead and get into the review. I'm just going to be talking casually, talking about the gun. We're going to have a good time, relax, sit back, enjoy. I'm going to let you guys know everything you're going to want to know about this gun before we get into the shooting test, which will be the second half of this video. All right, so starting off, I just want to let you guys know what comes in the box. You obviously get the gun. You get a full metal 300 round high capacity magazine with the wind up wheel on the bottom. You get two rail covers. I have one on this side as well as this side. You get a vertical foregrip. You do not get this sight. You get a 9.6 volt uh, nunchuck style battery as well as a standard wall charger. You get a bag of 500.20 gram BBs. You do not get this black flash rider. This actually comes with a orange plastic flash rider on the gun. However, I went ahead and took that off. And you also get a uh, barrel cleaning slash on jamming rod. So pretty nice starter package here. You get everything that you're going to need right out of the box. Remember though, important this does not come with it. Alrighty, anyways though, okay, let's start from the front of the gun and work our way to the back. So starting at the front, as I said, I went ahead, took off the uh, plastic orange flash hider here. We have a full metal outer barrel, and this gun actually has a ton of metal parts, and I will list those for you guys, I'll let you guys know about them as we go through the gun. So getting into the quad rail system here, so this is made out of polymer, obviously the whole gun is made out of polymer. However, the bottom rail segment here is metal, which I'm not sure why they went ahead and did that, but it definitely feels nice, and I definitely Definitely do like that. But yeah, so obviously the other rail segments here on the left, the right side, as well as the top of the gun here are polymer. And then as you guys can see, I already mentioned it though, I went ahead through on the rail coverage, which I think looks pretty nice. And then obviously they also included the um, the vertical foregrip, which I included, and it just makes the gun look a lot nicer. However, if you don't want to put them on, obviously you don't have to. Now at the front here, we do have our full metal front flip up iron sight. So it actually flips up just like so. That's what it looks like. Perfect. There you go. There you go, now that's better. So it's a flip up sight, however, if you want to go ahead and push it down, you can't just push it down, it actually locks into place. You have to go ahead and push the button on the side, 
and then it flips down just like so. And that goes with the rear iron sight. Obviously, it's metal, so both front and rear iron sights are flip up. They're metal. You have to push the button on the side, and then you can flip them down. So standard sights. And actually, one thing I'd like to mention though with the rear iron sight is it actually has two apertures. Maybe I can get this for you guys. So there is a large one right there, and then you can go ahead and flip it just like so, and then you have a smaller one. And then you can actually adjust it to the left or right as well, so you can dial it in perfectly. And going back to the front one here for adjusting, you can actually go ahead and adjust the little post here in the middle, up or down. So spend your time, dial it in. Obviously, you can go ahead and get a red dot. You don't even have to mess with the iron sights. So as what I do, I go ahead and flip them down just for the sake of the video. All right, so getting into the middle of the gun though, we have our upper and lower receivers, which are made out of polymer. We have a full metal dust cover, which is really nice, along with our metal charging handle. So if you pull it back, it reveals your hop-up. It actually has a fake bolt too, which goes back with it. Um, but there is your rotary type of hop-up, which is metal as well. And when you let go, it actually makes a pretty nice sound, so that's pretty cool. Let's go ahead and flip that up though. So that is where your hop up is. So if you need more hop, adjust it, less hop, just adjust it, do what you need to do. And then here we just have, you know, just a non-functioning spring assist. I believe that's what it's called. And this is not metal. This is actually plastic, but yeah, this does absolutely nothing. On the lower receiver though, we do have some trades. I believe that says made in Hong Kong. If you guys can see that, I think that's what it says. It's hard to read backwards. And then here we have auto, semi and safe, which are engraved into the polymer. So that is really nice. It's not painted on. Here though, we do have our metal mag release. I believe I said in the unboxing video that this is actually plastic. Plastic. This is metal. So you go ahead, push it, it releases your magazine. Again, this is a 300 round full metal high capacity magazine. Trap door on the top, wheel on the bottom. And I really like the color that they went with on this mag. It's like a matte type of dark earth finish. It's not like a shiny type of metal or a shiny type of paint. I really like how they made it matte. Alrighty, so getting into the trigger though, we have a full metal M4 style trigger along with a metal trigger guard. Behind it though, we just have a standard M4 style polymer motor grip. Very, you know, just standard. You know, I don't really like these type of motor grips you can obviously go ahead and uh, swap it out for something nicer but most guns come with this and then on the bottom here we just have a plate with the motor height screw so if you need to adjust it just go ahead turn this up you know counterclockwise or clockwise depending on you know what noise the gun is making but out of the box don't worry about it this is set just as it should be and then getting into the stock here actually before we get into that we actually have some sling points here on the bottom near the buffer tube which are metal most you know skirmish line of guns or beginner guns when it comes to sling points they are completely plastic this is is full metal so if you go ahead and attach a sling don't worry about this thing breaking or cracking now getting into the buffer tube this is also metal and then here is just a standard crane stock which is where your battery is stored so what you want to do is just go ahead push these tabs on the bottom and this thing should pop up go ahead take it off so this is where your batteries are going to be stored this gun is lipo ready i don't really want to talk about the internals right now but we're back here so we might as well this gun is actually wired to dean's right out of the box and if you look at that that is a mosfet you do not see mosfets in beginner's guns so that is a very very cool feature so this is going to protect your trigger contacts however one thing to note though since we're talking about you know the Dean's connector right here it actually comes with an adapter so this actually comes pre-installed on the gun just like so so it's wired to like just a normal Tamiya however if you get an 11 one please get it wired to Dean's you can go ahead and take this off plug it right into this and your rate of fire will go up just a little bit the trigger response will increase just a little bit just ultimately Dean's are the way to go however do not stress if you don't have one or you don't want to pay money for a Dean's, you know, wired battery, you can obviously just go ahead and still use this adapter. So very cool that they include this though. I went ahead and got an 11.1 if my camera focuses, if it's not too bright. Uh, yeah, it's probably, oh, here we go. It's probably too bright. Uh, I don't know. This is an 11.1 though. Go ahead, just slide it in on both sides, connect it with Dean's. Very, very nice. I can't wait to show you guys the rate of fire on this thing, but we'll get to that later on in the video. So let's just go ahead, slide this all back in just like so and put this back on. But yeah, so that's the stock. Crane style stock, adjust it to whatever, you know, length you want whatever is most comfortable nothing too crazy anyways so let's go ahead and flip the gun over to the other side here and uh, really there's nothing else too different here besides the fire selector switch which is also metal so you have safe I'm trying to get that so the Sun can reflect so you guys can actually see it maybe you can but anyway so that says safe flip it up for semi flip it again for full auto and I like how this is also engraved into the polymer and then here as well that says classic army so this is also engraved however one thing I would like to mention that I'm kind of just nitpicking at this point is that I wish they went ahead and engraved the um, the trades right here like M4 carbine caliber and whatever that says I can't read those numbers backwards um, I wish those were engraved as well I think it would have been so much nicer however maybe they just wanted it to stand out a little bit more paint it white and stuff um, but I definitely would have liked to see those engraved but it's not a big deal as I said I'm just nitpicking 
nitpicking. But one thing I really do like is look at the design they have on the upper receiver and all the little cutouts and notches they made in the upper receiver just to make it look a little bit more unique instead of just so plain and simple. If this was just flat, it would look kind of boring. So I definitely do like that. And obviously the opposite side of the mag catcher, the mag release is metal as well. But yeah, you guys, hopefully that wasn't too long. I didn't want to take too much time doing, you know, just talking about it, going over it. But this is the EC2. So now let's get into the internals. So internally, let's start with the gearbox. This is a nine millimeter bushing gearbox, um, full metal. Obviously this actually has wire cut, steel wire cut, 18 to one ratio gear. So I cannot wait to show you guys the rate of fire on this thing with an 11.1 LiPo battery. So not only that, this thing actually has a quick change spring feature. It's LiPo ready, obviously. It comes wired to Dean's right out of the box. It has that uh, Dean's to Tamiya connector or adapter. It comes with a MOSFET. Guys, this thing is just, it's literally stacked. It's jacked up with internals. I don't mean jacked up like it's bad. Maybe that's the wrong word to use, uh, but this thing is just solid. Internally, this thing is solid. And for $165, man, I don't know how you can beat this. So internally, you guys, that's why I say this could potentially be one of the best guns out there. Okay. Anyways, though, let's go ahead and get into the shooting test. All right, so let's get into the chrono test. I think I already threw in the clip of me, you know, the flight path of the BBs shooting the gun. So you guys heard how freaking fast this gun shoots on a fully charged 11.1 wire to Dean's. So anyways, let's go ahead and see the FPS. Uh, I have point twenties in here. I have the chronograph set for point twenties. Let's go ahead and see how hot this gun is shooting. 361, 364, 357, 363, 358, 367, 350, 364, 355, oh, did not read, and 349, let me do one more, that's a little low. 359, so basically anywhere from 350 to 365, and that's exactly what they say online. They say anywhere between 350 and 375 FPS. So very cool, anyways though, Let's flip this thing to full auto. Let's see how fast this thing is shooting on 11.1. Ready guys? Oh my, 15.46, are you kidding me? 15.47, 15.42, and 15.71, oh my, okay. I will convert this to rounds per second for you guys on the screen right now. I'll average it out obviously. And uh, that burst right there, 360, I did not look at the others. I always forget to do that. Um, but guys, this thing is crazy. Anyways though, okay. Let's go ahead and get into the accuracy test. I'm going to go ahead and shoot probably around like 75, 80 feet and uh, shooting out of basically a hand sized target. So let's go ahead and see how this EC2 performs. All right, so that was at around 75, 80 feet, and at the start it wasn't looking too good, but that is because I forgot to adjust the hop up. I used 0.20 gram BBs. Not to mention, I could barely see where I was hitting um, when I wasn't hitting the target. That's why I love these shoot and see targets, because you can see all the way back there uh, where exactly you're hitting. And we actually did get a few bullseyes, or two bullseyes back to back right there. So that's pretty cool. And just to remind you guys, these targets, size of my hand, okay? So literally you're shooting someone's hand at around 80 feet, somewhere around there really consistently. Again, I missed quite a few shots at the beginning, but that is my fault, 100% my fault. And also, I did not go ahead and use that red dot that I have on the gun for this accuracy test. I was using the iron sights, and I didn't even sight those in, so I did absolutely nothing to the gun. Very pleased though, if this was a human or a human-sized target, no problem at 80 feet.
All right, so I took the camera off the tripod so you guys can actually see a little bit closer, um, just in case that wasn't in focus. Uh, but anyways, look at these things, you guys. This is crazy. Just completely shredded them up and guys the rate of fire i can't believe it all right you guys i think that is going to do it for this video though you guys remember please let me know if you guys want to see more of my gun reviews like this where i have everything in one video where i started off with the review finished off with the shooting test and i think i like doing it this way more but let me know your opinion is what matters but yeah so if you guys are interested in purchasing this gun remember links will be in the description 165 classic army once again thank you also for sending this out to me you guys are amazing you guys did one hell of a job with this ec2 and guys stay tuned for the vcw i still have to do the video on that and i already messed around with it and that noise amplifier you guys oh my god that thing is crazy but we'll save that for when i actually do the video on the vcw but anyways you guys if you enjoyed the video go ahead and smack that thumbs up button if you're new go ahead and click the subscribe button down below i would greatly appreciate both of those things but again thank you all so much for watching i hope you all enjoyed but until next time i'll see you guys later